After losing out on multiple star players the last few off seasons, the San Francisco Giants finally got their guy in Korean outfielder Jung Hoo Lee. Lee was born on August 20th, 1998, and he's the son of Jong Byom Lee, a star shortstop and outfielder in the KBO, regarded as the best all-around player in the league during the 90s. Along with all the awards and accolades that he picked up during his career, Jong Byom Lee also earned himself a couple nicknames like Baseball Genius and the Korean Ichiro, which is just awesome but he's mostly known as the Son of the Wind, and he passed this nickname down to Jung Hoo Lee, who's known as the Grandson of the Wind. What the shit? That's the coolest name ever! Lee was picked in the first round of the 2017 KBO draft by the Nexon Heroes, making the team's opening day roster at just 18 years old after converting from the infield to the outfield. He was the first rookie out of high school to play in every game for a KBO team, going on to win the KBO Rookie of the Year and set a new rookie record for hits with 179 while hitting well above 300. Following his rookie year, Lee played in the 2018 Asian Games and helped South Korea win gold that year, which actually exempted him from the country's mandatory military service. So if he isn't a big part of helping them win this thing, we could be talking about a completely different story right now. Starting his second season in 2018, Lee would go on to win five straight KBO Golden Glove Awards, taking over as the full-time center fielder in 2021. His best season was in 2022 when he won the KBO MVP, hitting almost 350, an OPS just shy of 1,000, getting over 20 homers, and a career-high 175 WRC+. The Heroes announced early in 2023 that they'd post Lee after after the season per his request, but this year didn't go quite as he'd hoped. He still finished with very solid numbers, but his season was cut short in only 86 games because he fractured his ankle. Now, while Lee has been dominating the KBO these last couple years, the San Francisco Giants have spent this time trying to fill the superstar void that's been left after the last of their World Series winning guys have either moved on or retired. The Giants have been linked to some of the bigger names that have been out there these last few off seasons, but they just haven't been able to bring in that next superstar guy that can be the real face of the franchise. There are reports saying that they were finalists for Bryce Harper, but that their offer included less overall guarantees than the Phillies' 13-year, $330 million deal that he ended up signing. They were also interested in second baseman Marcus Simeon, who's from the Bay Area, and he was a star with both Cal and with the A's, but their offer just didn't match up to the Rangers' seven-year, $175 million offer, but to be fair... To be fair. A lot of teams' offers didn't match up to what the Rangers gave him. San Francisco also chose not to pursue re-signing starting pitcher Kevin Gosman following his breakout all-star season with them in 2021, instead letting him walk and he signed a five-year $110 million deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. Then this last offseason, the Giants were the main competition to the New York Yankees for outfielder Aaron Judge coming off of his historic MVP season, but they decided instead that they were going to sign his last lesser known brother arson judge and may the memes never die after missing out on judge they pivoted to shortstop carlos correa and for the first time in a long time it finally looked like they had their next superstar correa agreed to a 13 year 350 million dollar deal to join san francisco but the giants ended up pulling their offer after concerns with correa's physical so he agreed instead with the mets who also pulled their offer because of medical concerns, and now Correa's a twin again. It's been a real struggle for San Francisco to land these top free agents, but it's something that the front office is still very much focused on. Even new manager Bob Melvin acknowledged the team's struggles with this, saying it's a town that really wants to identify with a big-time star player, and that's what we're looking to do right now. And this year, the Giants have reportedly been big players in free agency, going after two-way superstar Shohei Otani and Japanese star pitcher Yashinobu Yamamoto. But even though they would do everything in their power, they'd still miss out on the big prize of this offseason. While the Giants were busy pursuing Otani, Jung Hoo Lee was posted on December 4th, giving MLB teams a 30-day window to sign the Korean star. 
but they were not going to need that long to get a deal done. Despite the Giants giving Otani the exact same offer, he ended up deciding to go join the rival Los Angeles Dodgers instead. So at this point, San Francisco knew that they couldn't mess around anymore. They had to get a big deal done and they had to do it now. So on December 14th, they signed the 25 year old outfielder to a six year, $113 million contract. This is the first free agent that's gotten a deal worth over $100 million from the Giants since Johnny Cueto back in December of 2015. It's been a long wait, but they finally have their guy in Zheng Hu Lee. But now what exactly are they getting? We can see his absolutely ridiculous slash line from his KBO career. There is a little bit of power that started to emerge from his six foot, 171 pound frame as he matured more. But really when we think about Lee, there are three tools that stand out for him. The first is his just ridiculous bat to ball skills. 2023 was the lowest average of his career at 318. He peaked all the way up at 360 in 2021, and he was making contact on more than 90% of his swings each year from 2020 to 2023. It was nearly impossible to get a swing and miss out of Lee, and he never hit below 300 in any season. He's got great bat to ball skills. This man was just out here hitting everything. Baseball America's Kyle Glazer wrote, Lee is an exemplary hitter with a fast left-handed swing, saying that he consistently gets the barrel to the ball, driving hittable pitches on a line to all fields, makes consistent contact against both fastballs and breaking balls, and he projects him as an above average to plus hitter. And this leads us into his second tool, because while he probably could, he wasn't up there trying to hit everything. He showed a great approach at the plate, striking out less than he walked, and in both 2022 and 2023, he actually walked over twice as often as he struck out. That's just wild. Glazer writes that he identifies pitches quickly and controls the strike zone with a mature, patient approach. He's going up there with a plan, looking for something that he can hit, and then defending the strike zone when he needs to. You tend to see with a lot of these higher contact guys that while they usually don't strike out a lot because of this, they also don't walk a lot either because they get a little over aggressive and overly reliant on this contact ability and they start putting balls in play that they really shouldn't even be swinging at. But Lee wasn't doing this, he was still staying patient and he was still getting a decent amount of walks. To get an idea of just how insanely good his approach has been, a good comparison here would be to take a look at Lee's 2022 season versus Luisa Rise that same year, who's hands down the best contact hitter in the majors and I will fight anybody on that. And now, no, 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 stop it. I'm not saying at all that Lee is as good as Arise is right now. This is not at all what I'm saying. We always have to wait and see how these guys from overseas can translate over to Major League Baseball. This is just to give us a great example of how far ahead his contact ability and plate approach were above these professional pitchers that he was facing in the KBO. Yes, it's a different level, but these are still professionals. And the final tool that he should bring over to San Francisco will be his defense, especially in center field. And now we don't have as many stats to go off for his defense over there, but he did win five straight gold gloves and his fielding percentage in center field was better than when he was in either corner outfield spot and it was above the MLB average this year. It's still fielding percentage, so take it as you will. Now, as far as his defense, Glazer says that he has solid instincts and runs good routes in center field, but his range is a tick short. Lee has reliable hands and projects to be an average defender in center field. And even if he is just an average defender out there, having average defense at a premier defensive position like center field, that's still a plus. So during his KBO career, Zheng Hu Lee showcased high end and contact skills, great control of the strike zone, and solid defense in center field. And he heads to San Francisco to hopefully give the Giants something that they've been missing for years. Until we see these guys from overseas compete against major leaguers, we can only get an idea of what type of player they're gonna be. Most likely, he's not gonna have that same level of production against better competition in the MLB. So I'm curious what you think about Zheng Hu Li, especially if you're a Giants fan, how do you think he'll do? And did San Francisco finally get its newest star player? Now the offseason is 
finally heating up. We've also got Tyler Glasnow getting traded to the Dodgers, so we'll have something for you on that soon. But the Dodgers had made a slightly bigger move before that. They signed Shohei Otani to a record-breaking $700 million contract. You can find out all about that and why the Dodgers still needed to make the Glasnow trade by checking out the video that's on your screen now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have an awesome day. Later.